there are a lot of great podcasts out there. And one of the things that I've been doing is recommending a podcast at the end of each episode. So make sure you stay tuned to the very end because I guarantee you the podcast I recommend you're going to love. On this episode, we're going to discuss the mental health crisis and the importance of mental health. I'll also be talking to my guest about her new book, Behind the Screen, which teaches a seven-step life timeline system of transformation to overcome your subconscious programming. Carrie Schmidt is the founder and CEO of Infinite Solutions. She puts the soul in solutions by changing people's lives, both personally and professionally. She's a dynamic, influential thought leader and motivational speaker who can capture your mind, heart, and soul in an instant. She does this by giving you the tools to get clear on your purpose, overcome limiting beliefs, and have the confidence to go after your dreams. Even though she had reached the top of the corporate ladder and earned a six-figure salary, which was everything she had ever worked for, Carrie still longed for something more. She started on a spiritual journey of self-discovery and growth that led her to study the basics of psychology, neuroscience, and quantum physics. Carrie is now a certified life mastery consultant who offers life coaching programs and business consulting services. Her goal is to reach, teach, and change the lives of more than 1 million people around the world by helping to raise human consciousness. Enjoy the conversation. Coming to you from the Freedom Federal Credit Union Studios, Harford County Living presents Conversations with Rich Bennett. Come on, you're faster than with me. Guys. Yeah. Oh man, you already on. said it. I was gonna ask her if she remembered the date. Before I introduce my guest, I everybody listen, and I want you to do something for me. Go to Amazon and look for the book Behind the Screen, Uncover the Truth, Connect to Your Power, Passion, Purpose. If you've already purchased the book, great. If you haven't purchased the book yet, do so. Read the book, leave a full review of the book, because we want to get this up to at least a hundred plus reviews and this book i guarantee you will help you change your life and of course it's written by my guest carrie schmidt how you doing carrie i am wonderful rich thank you so much for having me on your show oh it's my pleasure you you haven't hit 100 reviews yet have you no because it just came out didn't it you know what's amazing is that's actually my goal so thank i know that's why i said that Thank you very much. And yes, I would be grateful for anybody to go to Amazon and buy my book. It took me four years to write. I tell some real raw truth, things that I wouldn't tell um, a close friend. I write in the book. Yes, because the screen is your lens of life. It's how you Mm -hmm. view yourself. It's how you view your outside world. And ultimately, it's kind of like your subconscious programming. And sometimes you have to get behind the screen. You got to go into your memories and experiences to try to figure out what's going on. Um, right. So it's 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 really powerful, impactful. I talk about um, the effects of divorce on children. I talk about abandonment, childhood abandonment, racism, uh, drug and alcohol abuse, mental health. Um, that all of that kind of led to my moment of awakening, uh, being a single mother. So I raised my son on my own since he was born and he's now 15. Um, wow. I climbed the corporate ladder until I was a general manager of a hundred million dollar manufacturing facility in the Pittsburgh area union plant. Um, and then I said, okay, money and a title isn't it. When I got to that kind of point in my life and I ended up leaving corporate America, starting my own business, which is called Infinite Solutions, because there's I love that. there's a solution to any problem. You just mm-hmm. have to approach it from the right viewpoint, you know, perspective, yes. a different way of thinking, like Albert Einstein said. Um, and so I've been through a lot and I felt as if I'm at the point in my life where I have a voice and I know I'm meant to do more in the world. I want to lead positive change in the world. I want to help people raise their level of consciousness. 
Um, and I want to be an advocate for mental health awareness because mental health is the most important health there is. Yes. Yes. And I think it's, we need to make more, more people aware of it now, especially because, you know, during the pandemic, you saw depression, anxiety, and suicide just go sky high. And I people are still suffering from that. They're, I don't believe those numbers are coming down yet. I agree. And books like this would definitely help. People coming on telling their story mm-hmm. will help. And especially with teenagers. That's, I mean, it's very high. You know, and I have a teenage son. My son's 15. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, virtual school. It's a different oh, world. God. We are living in a different world. But in addition, think about it, school shootings. I mean, if I yeah. was in high school, I don't know if I would really want to go to school anymore because every time my son said he doesn't, we don't watch the news. I don't watch the news. No, either do I. Okay, good. Um, CNN, <laughs> constantly negative news. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I mean, I don't love that, but I mean, yeah, the acronym, I never heard that. <laughs> yeah, but it's funny because I had the TV on yesterday and it was actually on a news channel and I had mm-hmm. the volume down and my son walks in the living room. He goes, oh, great. I haven't looked at the news forever. And now it's talking all about school shootings, right? So that's the first yeah. thing he sees. Um, yeah. And, you know, we're just living in a different world. And I just think that our systems have been failing for way too many years. Healthcare, education, financial systems in America are failing. We need to wake up, rise up and do something different um, because, you know, we, we just have to for our children and their children. Yeah. And the thing is, if the new I've been saying this, which is one of the reasons I started my one website, it. It would be nice if there was a news network that focused on nothing but good, positive news. That's a really, yeah. We need more of that. We need more of that. And I know there's some websites out there, but no, just to push that because you're seeing it with the TV shows too. It's just all this negativity. Netflix. I feel like Netflix is all negative anymore. It's just like doom and gloom and... Yes. Come on. Let's... All of them are. Positivity is Except contagious for... too. <laughs> yeah. They, actually, it's funny because there's um, a new uh, network. I guess it's a network that I subscribe to called Pure Flix, mm-hmm. which is all Christian based TV series and movies. And it's great. I love it. It's like if, if be, there's one on there it's with a, a biker show. I mean, there's some violence in there but the message is clear yes and that, that's what i love you know if you're getting that message across so if you don't mind me asking you know with the mental health and you mentioned divorce and all that is this something that you experienced when you were younger as well yes so i was okay. in a relationship when i was 14 with someone who is a different race than i was okay and my family disowned me um Uh, Jesus. In addition to my family, my mother didn't. My mother was by my side, but the rest of my family pretty much disowned me. Um, It was a very difficult relationship. It was emotionally exhausting. The guy cheated on me. And, you know, if I could go back when I was 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, like, come on, Carrie, you know, eyes up. Get move on, girlfriend. But Uh, yeah, but when you're that young, you don't think it's the teenage screen. Right. So I talk, I have a whole chapter dedicated to the teenage screen and how girls, you know, go into relationships and, you know, think it's the end of the world. If, if the guy, you know, if we were to break Mm -hmm. up, I mean, I thought about suicide. I attempted suicide. You know, I, I took a bottle of pills one night and I, I I still woke up in the morning. Um, I write about, I used to look at the brick wall at the bottom of his street and I imagined putting my car in drive and just going all the way and just smashing into the brick wall like so many times. Wow. And this is terrible, but yeah, this is what kids, you know, teenagers go through and Mm -hmm. we don't have enough support out there to, you know, get rid of the stigma. I don't even like calling it mental illness. You know, it's it's mental health. Let's talk about mm-hmm. the thoughts that are going through your mind, where those thoughts are coming from, how those thoughts are making you feel, you know, and it's all mindset. You can actually shift your mindset and you can have a greater impact 
through just talking with somebody. Right. But, you know, it's like counseling therapy that has a negative connotation to it. You know, I want to I want to bring life coaching to high schools and colleges. Like I want to I want to I want to have a yes. bigger impact. Um so yes, I struggled with depression. When I was 14 years old, my mom took me to the doctor. The doctor put me on Paxil. Now, this is this is what I just don't understand. Is that you know, you go to the doctor, you tell them your symptoms, they give you a Band-Aid. But they're not finding out what's going on in your mind, what's going mm -hmm. on at home, what's going on in your relationships. They just say, oh, you're depressed. You have a chemical imbalance. Maybe. Take this pill. Maybe. But, um, you know, I, I would challenge that and go back and say, well, I was being cheated on. My family mm -hmm. disowned me. I had nobody. I was sad. I felt unstable. What, what do you expect when you're in that type of environment? So right. they put you on Paxil and then my mind is foggy and then it makes me even more depressed and it makes me sleep. And it's just, it's a terrible system and yeah. we need to break it. Yes. One of the things I never understood either about these medications they give you, whether it be for depression or suicide, one of the side effects are it may cause more depression or suicidal tendencies. Right. It's like, why are you giving me this if it could make me worse? And not better. Right. Because they and don't, I, they don't know because they don't assess no. the whole, you know, mind, body, energy system. That's why I'm much more into holistic healthcare and looking at, you know, what's going yes. on in your mind because disease manifests in your energy body before it ever even manifests in your physical body. And it yes. is so true. Yeah. I, I just, I never understood that. And I've had several different people on, talking about the different ways that they've coped with it uh meditation mm -hmm. you know yoga uh the crystal reiki mm -hmm. you know a lot of the holistic stuff and it's of course doctors aren't going to tell you to try that out no. well there's because no they money. can't do it they're, right exactly they're not trained to do it they're not educated <laughs> because our american medical association i don't i don't know i, I let me yeah. preface this i don't know by saying but i don't know if they teach all of the, you know, energy. And yeah, I dove down the rabbit hole, Rich. I really did. I <laughs> dove down the rabbit hole about 10 years ago and I started, you know, researching psychology, neuroscience, quantum physics, energy, our biofields, you know, what are the chakra systems? Right. I was mind blown, mind blown. And I know there are so many people that don't even understand what those words are, but your chakras are connected to your hormones. They're, 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 it's yes. it's all your governing body through your central nervous system. Um, and if it's out of balance, then what would you expect to, you know, have happen in your body? Yes. Our bodies are magical systems. I mean, my God. But we, I think society has been conditioned to think that this is the best way. And yeah. I'm here to say... This is why I say uncover the truth. Sometimes we need to uncover the truth and see what's really going on. Well, and I love the title behind the screen, but how does somebody get behind the screen to clean it? Mm, that's a good step. Good question. So I teach a seven step life timeline system of transformation in my book to okay. do to do exactly that. So what is your life timeline? It's from birth until today. So I have 40 years, I'm 40, so I have 40 years of memories, experiences, emotions that have shaped my operating system, my belief system, right? And so this is how every human person has this. 95% mm -hmm. of what that is, is your subconscious mind. It's a subconscious program. Okay. From zero to seven years old, Dr. Bruce Lipton teaches that children are operating in a theta brainwave frequency. That is a slower, it, it's basically a download into your brain. Everything that you're exposed to, hear, see, behavior patterns, it just becomes a download because this is how our bodies work. This is how the brain works. And so those become your memories, but it becomes your reference point. And the more you go through life, um, 
replaying or, or repeating that reference point, the more it just becomes wired into your long-term memory and it becomes habitual. Um, right. And that that's why we have these unconscious behavior patterns. You know, we have this way of thinking, feeling, acting wired into our subconscious mind. So when something triggers us, we react. And that is a survival mechanism as well, because it's wired into your central nervous system, your fight or flight nervous response. I told you I went down the rabbit hole. <laughs> I'm glad you did. <laughs> I really know a little bit of what. If I'm you didn't, about. the book would not be out. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so within that system, I teach you how to step one is to tag it. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm 40 years old and I know I have an unconscious behavior pattern. Maybe it's resentment towards somebody. Maybe it's I shut down when somebody um, does something wrong. I shut down and just like maybe give them the silent treatment. Those are right. unconscious behavior patterns, but they negatively impact your results in life. So I think that as we grow older, we're looking at our results and we're like, okay, maybe I want to make a change. You know, I think we outgrow those behaviors at some point in life. And mm -hmm. so step one is a tag it. Then step two is to go back and remember when was the first time that I was introduced to this behavior, this way of thinking what I'm doing. When was the first time that I saw that or observed that? Um, and most often I have clients that can go right back to like second grade <laughs> or when they were six years old. Right. And, and it's the yeah. same thing for me. My, I can take mine back to when I was eight years old and my parents were fighting. Um, and my dad used to yell at my mom a lot and it was just not a good environment. Right. Yeah. So I developed this. Yeah. I developed a sense of insecurity, you know, like, so my whole adult life, I've been looking for security. <laughs> mm -hmm. because I, I didn't feel that when I was younger. Right. And so this, these, these patterns and these programs run really deep, but the first step is to become aware of them. So it's raising your level of awareness to what's going on in my life today. And then looking back and seeing, okay, I might've picked this up in my subconscious mind when I was younger. And I right. had no control over what's coming into my mind when I'm younger. But now as an adult, I do have control over what I choose to continue to fire and wire in my brain. So hmm. step three is to feel it. Once you remember, okay, back then, um, then you have to feel those emotions that you probably didn't feel back then because maybe it was trauma, maybe it was traumatic. And so we learn coping mechanisms, shut down, you know, you know, isolate myself or yeah. fight, right? Fight or flee. It's, it's usually one of those two. Um, so you have to feel those emotions. Step four is to flip it. We walk through life with blinders on and we, you know, point, you know, and blame other people or the situation or this or that. This is where you're kind of challenged to flip your perspective and look at it from the other person's point of view. And I use my father as an example in telling this story because my grandma and grandpa came over from the boat on from Germany. Uh, my grandmother never got a job, never got a driver's license. She was a stay-at-home mom. She cooked, right. she cleaned, she took care of the kids. I never met my grandfather, but my mom tells me he was a mean old German. <laughs> a mean. Oh, God. Um, and so, you know, I think about that. My dad was raised by in this household where the the mother doesn't go out and work and takes right. care of the kids. And, you know, the father, if he was a mean old German, imagine you know, what mm -hmm. he went through. So when my mom went out to get a job, my dad didn't like that. And so that started the yelling and the fighting and that led to the divorce. So if I wow. flip the perspective and I say, okay, if I'm looking at this through my father's lens of life, he he's, he's not been introduced to any other way. You know, in the yeah. 1980s, women didn't go get a job or they were starting to, right? So, so I can't blame him for his operating system was just seeing that he didn't see anything else. And so that's what we have to do yeah. a lot of times is we have to flip the perspective and, and, you know, not judge, not blame, but just kind of become more aware of what yeah. happened. Step yeah. Cause so society was big, uh, really different 
back then. Yeah. Yeah, when we were kids, and, and especially when our parents and grandparents were kids. Exactly. It just it just keeps so, revolving. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so step five is to release it. So these are all emotions. Mm -hmm. And emotions are energy in motion, or they can become stuck energy in your bio field. And when you start to realize energy, you start to, you know, you'll you'll hear people say, I feel like I just have a dark cloud following me around in life. It's not yeah. I mean, yeah, you do. It's your energy field. Yes. You have these stuck, unprocessed, suppressed emotions that you haven't dealt with and they need to be dealt with. Otherwise, they'll continue to follow you. So I have a whole chapter on releasing suppressed emotions. Um, step six is to reprogram. Okay, so there's a thing called neuroplasticity. It means that you can reprogram and rewire your brain, your way of thinking, your operating system, those paradigms, the belief system. Some of the beliefs that you might have might be false. They might not right. be serving you. So we let that stuff go and then we reprogram our mind to really manifest what we would love. Step seven is to resonate. Everything's energy. So you can't... Um, you can't get to where you want to go unless you become that person now. You wear the energy, you put on the energy of that. And then I say rinse and repeat because it's a process. It takes 21 days to stop a bad habit, 90 days to reprogram a new way of being. It's called the 2190 rule. Really? So that's why most coaching programs that. are 12 weeks long because okay. it takes time to repattern your way of thinking. Replace those old limiting beliefs with new empowering uh, thoughts. Right. Um, and so it's it's really, it's an amazing system. In the back of the book, I have a journal. So I have exercises after each chapter that you can do the exercise. Oh, that's great. You can apply this system of transformation to your life now. Um, and then afterwards, I have a 12-week coaching program if anybody wants to go deeper into what they kind of uncovered about themselves through reading my stories. So I use myself. I'm the guinea pig. I'm very vulnerable in this book okay. to teach this system of transformation using my own personal stories of how I've applied it to my life. Wow. So first of all, I have to agree with you. Yes, the schools definitely need life coaches in them. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, you're the first, and I've had life coaches on here, but you're the first one that ever mentioned that. Well. And I'm surprised it hasn't happened. Me too. And here's why, because the, the, there's just not money in it, right? Um, yeah. Maybe. And that might be just a paradigm, but I'm reaching out to schools. I'm reaching out to high Good. schools and colleges and I'm saying, hey, let me speak. I'll go on stage. I have a book. Um, when I did my book launch, I actually did a buy one gift one. So mm -hmm. I have some books to, you know, gift to high school students. And That's a great idea. I really want to have more high school students read the book and just get their perspective because I really do believe that it can be really life changing, the message. Oh, actually, have you reached out to the school libraries about carrying your book and the public libraries? No, good, good, good. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I would definitely do that because, I mean, the kids definitely need it without a doubt, especially mm -hmm. in today's society. Yeah. Um. And well, I know you you've been out doing book signings. I'm sure. Yes. Um. But yeah, something like that to get into the public libraries or even the school libraries would be a big plus. And. Go out and, like you said, try to do the life. If you if they don't allow you to go into the schools as a life coach, then you're always, you're always seeing schools bringing motivational speakers. Do that. Yeah. I mean, I know there's a, actually a friend of mine's on the circuit that does it all the time. He used to play at the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh, cool. And he's always going into all the different public schools, talk he's a motivational because he was bullied when he was a kid he mm -hmm. grew up in baltimore city on the west side mm -hmm. and these gangs kept trying to get him in yep. and he just resorted to, he was only i mean he's short mm -hmm. he actually made history the, the shortest basketball player on the harlem globetrotters oh wow and then when he left they had to get somebody shorter so, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like ah, man come on jante um but now i i gotta get this I have to get this book now. Yeah. And forgive me for, forgive me for not getting it yet. I, I just, my, 
my belief is I don't like to read a book before I interview the author. Okay. Because I look, my guests don't, so I don't want to act like I, I don't want to know everything in it. Right. You know, so, uh, but yeah, I'm definitely going to get it so I can also read it and write a full review because we got to get to a hundred. Speaking of which. Thank you. Has Oprah got in touch with you yet? Um, She has. Yes, she has. Has she really? Okay. Um, in in my in my visualization, she has. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, because I know on your on your website that your dream is to be interviewed by her. Yes, I am so happy and grateful that Oprah has interviewed me in her in her Maui garden. I can still feel the breeze brushing across my arms, and I can still sense the big tree behind me as she's interviewing me. It's Wow. What a beautiful conversation. <laughs> All right. So with the book, I, cause I, one of the things I love to talk to authors about is their, um, technique and what they did. And I should have asked you this before we started. Um, because if you don't have it with me, you're probably going to reach through the screen and slap me. <laughs> Do you still have your action plan that you had put together from when you wrote the book? I did it all backwards. Um, huh? I, I did not. I I did it all backwards. So what I did is I said, I'm going to write this book. And then I just start writing what comes to me. And I wrote in a couple different notebooks, like handwriting. Okay. Before I'd go to the beach. I'd sit on the beach and I'd just write and just, you know, a lot of what came through, I think, you know, came from a higher power or something. It just yeah. comes through me. Um, so when I started to say, okay, now I got to piece this into like a real book. And I opened up one <laughs> note and I started like typing out some of my stories. So then it was like all just jumbled and I, I never started with an outline. <laughs> so well, a lot of people don't, <laughs> right. It was, it was, um, it, it, it I think it's a masterpiece because then I had to start piecing the puzzles together, like take this story and teach this and use this right. story to teach this. And so, um, I, God, you, so you edited it yourself, uh, several times. And then I hired a professional editor. Okay. At the end. Okay. You were looking I, around for something. I was going to pull out. I still have my manuscript. I was going to show you. Well, I still have, okay. Um, the the copies the versions that i had like printed and then read right so i have a whole bunch of those they're all over the place <laughs> I yeah don't well don't throw them, them away yes definitely keep them yes definitely keep them because yeah this way you can look back for your second book as well yeah well I, Which... the second book will be much easier to write now that i know what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> it's so true <laughs> but it's a learning process yeah I mean, everybody. I think everybody's first book is always something that they learn from, unless they go. Th now, actually, were you self-published or did you go through a publisher? No, I self-published. Okay. ADP. Okay, because I think it's when somebody goes through a publisher right away. I think it's harder because then you're given deadlines and everything else. Right. Let's take a little break here, so I can tell you about my friends over at Four Seasons Landscape and Construction Services. And when it comes to lawn maintenance and lawn renovations they are definitely the go-to people even snow removal services but something else that a lot of people don't think about that's very important that they do storm water maintenance whether it's a pine clean out uh, remove overgrowth of woody ornamentals uh, you know, debris trash and even drainage services you know if you have a cracked foundation they could rerun your downspouts French drains, proper grading. There's so much that goes in to stormwater maintenance and the proper drainage in your yard. And a lot of people don't know how to do it. You don't want it to run into the bay. You don't want it to run towards your foundation. You need the professionals to take care of it. And the professionals are Four Seasons Landscape and Construction Services. Give them a call today, 443-390-YARD. That's 443-390. 390-YARD-9273 or go to their website fourseasonslandscapemd.com Again, that's fourseasonslandscapemd.com They're giving you sustainable landscapes for the future. 
and they are the ones that get your yard looking beautiful. Now, is there anything in this book that you wish that you had put in that you didn't get a chance to? Mm, no, I don't think so. I think it, it's it's very, the stories I tell are very vulnerable, very mm-hmm. vulnerable. Like I, I questioned myself if I should tell some of the stories. And I said, you know what? The only way I'm going to reach people is to be completely open be honest and honest. And tell them, yeah. Um, because that's just, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm an open book. Mm-hmm. I can't fake it to make it if I tried. <laughs> it's just, it's just how I am. Um, but you know, in writing the stories, I processed a lot of emotions that I didn't even know I still had suppressed. You know, I yeah. talk about leaving my son's father when he was a baby and, you know, he jumped on the hood of my car and held on to the windshield wipers as I'm trying to drive away. Oh my God. This craziness, you know, he used to walk around with an AK 47 and say he was going to shoot me and my whole family. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Just craziness. Okay. So wow. this, this is just, these are things that happen behind the screen. And that is the whole point. Like you just never know what's going on. We look through social media, we scroll and we, yeah. we admire or judge or whatever it is. Um, but we're constantly observing others and we are perceiving that their life is perfect. Bullshit. I'm sorry. Yeah. It, no, oh, that's okay. It's, it's just not, there's, there's so much that goes on behind that yeah. screen that you just don't know about. And that is the purpose of the book is to reach those people who are hiding behind the screen, dealing with emotional abuse, dealing with physical abuse, whatever type of abuse there is, whatever type of trauma you have been through. Yeah. Over lining is you can use it for good. You can get out of the darkness. You can get out of the depression and you can really transform your life and live a life that's, full of peace, freedom, happiness, joy. I did it. I'm living in it. And I am just, I just want to show other people that yes, you can too. So Ed, earlier you said that your family had disowned you. Mm-hmm. Now, when they, they did not kick you out at that time, did they? No, um, my father and my sister and my uh, grandma, some aunts and uncles, they just kind of didn't talk to me anymore just didn't talk to you yeah god yeah i can see how that could be very it's just kind of like <sighs> i was shunned yeah. and yeah i was disgusting to them um and that's sad it is sad because it's something i've always said the outside the color of your skin doesn't mean diddly squat your brain and your heart everything inside is the same color that's right you know and that's one of the things we were taught in the marine corps there is no white there is no black yeah you know you're all the same yep and i just wish people today would realize that yep. you know it's like it, it just it it <clears throat> God. yeah it eats at me <laughs> yeah and I, i'm just the type of person that i i believe in what i believe and i'm not going to follow the crowd just because no. you say this like and i talk about you know when i was raised my my father said mean things um about people yeah and um i was raised to be racist but when i got mm-hmm. into high school uh, my girlfriends were hanging out with some guys you know and i'm just like okay and then i realized there nothing's wrong with them <laughs> they're no, no different than me you know it's it's it, it's again it's that perspective it's that screen it's your belief system that will shape your reality and sometimes yep. those systems are faulty and that's when i say they need to be cleaned you got to get in there yeah. and you got to do the work and get that gunk out of your mind so that you can live a healthy happy life yes ex- yeah definitely without a doubt And I I know you're going to get into the schools. I know you're going to do the life coaching in there. I know you're going to get your books into the schools because I can just sense it. I love it. I can feel it. (laughs) You can be, you you want to work with me and be kind of like, help my, help me with my sales. (laughs) Actually, I do have a, uh, there's a couple other podcasts that I want to mention to you when we're done that I there's one especially that you should definitely get on. Awesome. And oh, she is an awesome person to talk to and she went through abuse uh 
quite different than what you did, but it, it, she's just simply amazing. Yeah. And um, I'll have to, well, I'll just tell you, Ashley Easter. Okay. She does the Courage 365. And if you get a chance, um, check her out because she is just a phenomenal person to talk to. Um, got it. And it just went right out of my head that quick. <laughs> See, when you're, when you get my age, that's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, so the I'm business. just kidding. I said, yeah, I didn't mean to. I know. Yeah. No, that's okay, Carrie. I understand. Uh huh. <laughs> I have a niece your age. She does the same thing. So always cracking on me. Uh, <laughs> so, all right. Cause you, you, you grew up in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. So what brought you to South Carolina? Sunshine and blue skies, baby. I actually, <laughs> honestly, I manifested this all. I was, um, I say most people wait for the three D's, the wake up call, death, disease, or divorce to make a change in their oh. life. Um, and for me, my wake up call was the death of my father. He got pneumonia and very quickly his organs shut down and um, oh, sorry to hear that. Thank Jeez. you. Yeah, he was only 60 years old. So when I walked out of the hospital room mm. that day, my whole lens of life shifted. Um, tomorrow isn't promised to any of us. You just yeah. never know. It can be gone in the blink of an eye. So if you're not doing what you love, man, I, I just, it it was like the rug pulled out from under me and I realized how short life is. And that's when I started making the changes that I always wanted to make, but I never did. Right. Now, so, is he talking to you? again at this time oh yes yes okay good good yeah we okay. when i had my um son my family and everybody kind of just came back together all right good good my good. angel baby okay yeah um so i decided that i wanted to move from i lived in a small town called sharon pennsylvania mm-hmm. if you google the least right. of sunshine in a <laughs> It's Buffalo, New York, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Seattle, Washington. Okay. I lived an hour away from Pittsburgh. So where I lived, I swear, it's gray 80% of the time. It's raining or snow. Okay. So. I, That's close to the Ohio line, isn't it? Right on the border. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I told my company, you know, I'm either going to leave the company or could you transfer me to Charlotte? Because they had a plant in Charlotte. And they said No. And so I said, okay. Wow. Um, and so I started looking for other jobs. I finally got a job offer um, at, at, with a company in Greensboro, North Carolina. It was mm-hmm. a Monday. I was getting ready to send my re- letter of resignation, my acceptance letter. My boss calls me. He says, book a ticket to Charlotte. I got you an interview with the general manager. And so from there on, uh, they created a position for me um, with that company because they didn't want to lose me. I was part of a right. $6 billion company um, and had made a really good impression with lots of improvements that I had helped lead with teams. So um, they relocated me down to Charlotte and I absolutely love it here. Sunshine and blue skies and I can wear flip flops outside pretty much anytime I want. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> nice. I love the Carolinas. Uh, yeah, my, my nephew's actually living in North Carolina now, and I was stationed in Carolina and uh, dated a girl for six years from North Carolina in the mountains. I, I got to admit, I did love the mountains better than the beach. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's, it's beautiful. Just, it is. It's, I mean, it's, there's something for everybody mm-hmm. there. You know, if you want to go snow skiing, if you want to go water skiing, fishing, hunting, anything, you know, yeah, mountain climb and flip flops on the beach. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Um, so your business, Infinite Solutions, which I love that. Love always love a play on words. Thank you. When did you start that? Twenty nineteen, September of twenty nineteen. Oh, so okay. Now, are you still with the company that you were with when you moved down there? I actually consult for them now. So, okay. Oh, so I'm a life coach and business consultant. Um, and so I serve them from a consulting perspective, which is really nice. It's kind of like my family, right. the people that I work with and, um, I understand their business and operation and I'm good at helping kind of facilitate culture change and improving right. processes, right. reducing waste. So, so what made you decide to start your own company? 
I was honestly tired of fighting the corporate politics. Mm-hmm. And I, that's why I say infinite solutions. Like I like to say I put yeah. the soul in solutions. Like we can still have solutions and, and make it good for everybody and involve right. people. So um, I'm a very conscious kind of heartfelt leader. Um, I'm very empathetic of the employees and, you know, how – they contribute to the success of the organization and improving communication. So everybody's kind of on the same page and marching the same order. Right. Just, yeah, I I love working with military people because they understand and, you know, kind of get that. You got enough of them down there. Yeah. That's for sure. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. when you decided to start this, I mean, were you kind of nervous at first? Oh yeah. I was scared to death. Like, I was used to making six figures and not having to worry about anything. And especially being a single mother. I mean, yeah, I've never got money from anyone for my son. It's me and him. So um, it was very scary. But I went out to L.A. and I studied under Mary Morrissey and the Brave Thinking Institute. Um, OK. Right before I started my business. And that was kind of the helping me bridge the gap to make it happen because I I. I went through the dream builder program, which teaches you how to kind of bridge the gap between the life you have and where you want to go. Mm -hmm. So I started applying that methodology to my life, to my decision-making, to my way of thinking. And I took action, you know, it's inspired action. You don't, you, you put the how on hold. I don't have to know how it's going to work, but as long as I continue to take a step forward in the effort of growth, transformation and leading positive change, you know, the road will pave itself. I, I believe right. in a higher power. I believe in God, you know. Um, so that's faith. So I put the fear behind and I took action with faith. And it wasn't easy, you know. That was right when 2020 happened, right? So, in fact, I had just gotten back from Los Angeles with Mind Valley Live, Vishen Lakiani, and all of these transformational leaders. I was fired up and then boom, they shut everything down. And I'm like, <laughs> shit, what am I going to do now? <laughs> I can't go speak anywhere. I can't do, you know, all of the ways that as a coach or consultant, you get business. It was all kind of shut yeah. off. So. Yeah. And you weren't essential. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it wasn't easy, but you know, nothing that's worthwhile. I don't think ever is. So yeah. just have to continue to have faith and have strong support system. My boyfriend is amazing. I'm, you know, in, absolutely in love. I manifested my soulmate. I spoke about him for two years before I, you know, we came together and it's it's just a beautiful thing how life will work out if you allow it to. Yeah. One of the things you just mentioned, the fear Mm -hmm. and you put out, you put out a video, which I think everybody needs to watch, uh, whether it's for starting a business or, you know, for mental health, the five steps to overcome fear of failure. Yeah. Can you go ahead and tell those five steps to everybody? Because I thought it was great. Oh, gosh. I don't really remember them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's because you already overcame the fear of failure. Right. You, you have to go to the – I did that for a magazine article. Um, okay. It was an authority magazine. So I can't remember them off the top of my head, but you could go <laughs> check out the video. I'll put a link in the show notes you to, the YouTube, Thank you. to the YouTube for it. But actually it brings up another point. I, and I don't understand why you're not doing this. How come you don't have your own podcast? I, well, I do in my mind. I just haven't got there okay. yet. <laughs> Um, well, you got to get it out of your mind and put it out there. <laughs> I know. I've been on over 40 podcasts um, since yeah. I since I launched my book in June. I absolutely love podcasting, by the way. I've connected with so many amazing people. Um, Podmatch is, is really a good tool. Yeah. But my podcast is called Behind the Screen. So Makes sense. Behind the Screen podcast. And I want my guests to come on and share, you know, mm-hmm. something – of a, it's a vulnerability session, something that they, you know, wouldn't typically share with somebody, but in the effort of growth and reaching people right. who need some more kind of that connection, that's what I want my podcast to be about. 
See, and the thing is, with something like that, you could talk to anybody. Exactly. Because everybody has something behind the screen <laughs> yep. that they're not sharing. And, uh, oh, my God. Carrie, you, yes. You, you After you finish, the, let's say, the book tour, you have got to do this. Well, so my goal is this. to record an Audible book first and then start the podcast. Okay. Now, would you do the Audible book yourself or would you have somebody else do it? No, I'll do it. You'll do it? Okay. Yeah. Yes, please do because it's my even story. though I'm going to I'm going to get a, a copy of the book because certain books you you need to read. Yeah. Certain books you, like novels I can listen to. Mm-hmm. I'd rather listen to because it's hard for me to read a book while I'm working. Um but with your book because it's I guess you could say it's also like a reference book. There's things I can go back in there and look at. Yeah. Um the other thing I, I I I would need that for whenever I'm doing all these mental health podcasts in person because we do a lot in person, and I could have the book there, yeah, so people could see it. Say, oh, Rich, where'd you get this? Yes. I need to get this. I want this. I want to get to. You know what? I'm sorry. I gotta say this. Screw a hundred reviews. I want it to get to a thousand. I love you, Rich. Within a, within a year's time. Okay. With within a year's time, and and I know once you get the word out there and you get on these other podcasts, it's going to happen. Once it gets into the school libraries, into the public libraries, it's going to happen. And just from hearing your story, and you know, reading the the brief description of the book on Amazon, oh my God, you're sitting on a freaking gold mine here that's what i thought too <laughs> oh you are it, it just and it just it takes time it does, it does take time and that's I, i'm the type of person i i want results i want results now i'm a go-getter yeah. i make it happen let's go let's go so it's it's it has been difficult up until now to you know kind of just realize that this takes time and yeah, it, and that I'll never stop promoting my book. And I am my salesperson, so I have to, I have to do everything, and it can be very overwhelming. It's a business. It is a business, um, and I am in the business to change lives. Yeah, which is a great business to be in. Yeah, I wish everybody was in that business. Yeah, you I know. actually just had a job offer yesterday. I turned down um, a very nice package. I'm talking about like nice package. Wow. Um, and I had a difficult time making this decision because it's steady income, beautiful yeah. package. Um, and it was for a senior consultant role with a, a company working with like aerospace, you know, working in different sectors of helping coach, executive coaching, process improvement, right. continuous improvement. And I made the final decision yesterday to turn it down. I said, right now is not the right time. I spent way too much time getting this book Mm -hmm. out there. I've spent way too much time trying to grow my business, grow my following and everything else. So now is just not the right time. And I feel so much better today that I made that choice in the effort of following my dream and not giving up on my dream. Because it's so easy to give up on your dream it's so easy. There's yes. always going to be these things that happen and it's like, okay, should I take that? But what you have to remember is if, you know, if I were to take that job, would I have steady income? Great. Yeah. Health insurance, all that good stuff. Right. But I'm letting my dream go and I just can't do that because exactly. I am on the edge of a breakthrough. I'm on the edge of getting this message out there. I want to speak I want to talk to people about the importance of your mindset. Yeah. So yeah. I'm right, proud of so myself. Carrie, something you said there, you said now is not the time. I got news for you. Never is the time yeah. because with what you're doing it, it and you already have it set in your mind, this is going to succeed. Yes. And I, personally, I think it already has um, just from – you know, talking to you and seeing everything, like I said before, I I could see you actually traveling around the country, probably around the world, talking to people because your story needs to be told. Yeah. And it's gonna help other people. And that's that's the main thing. You're 
you're going out there to change people's lives. That's your goal. Yes. And that's something we need, especially in today's society. We desperately, desperately need that. We need more people like you that care. Yeah. Thank about, you. you know, other people that are going through this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I applaud you. Thank for you. That, you know, for turning it down because, yeah, you, you're you set. You're good to go. I got this. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And you have a good support system. You got a you got a boyfriend that's supporting you. Mm-hmm. And your son's what, 15, you 15. said? 15, yep. He's my number and one And he's supporting supporter. you? <laughs> All right. All right, so does he want to follow in your footsteps, or th- does he know what he wants to do when he gets out of school? Um, He doesn't, but he has been okay. big into weightlifting. So I think he wants to be a bodybuilder or a trainer. Um, He's very big on, you know, um, healthy mind, healthy body. And for, I like that. for a 15 yeah. year old man, I did something really good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, God. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <sighs> God's got plans for everybody. And I yes. think you already know what his plan is for you. Yeah. So tell everybody the website and how they can get the book. I would be so happy and grateful. If you go to my website, it's Carrie Schmidt.com. And uh, follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I'm at Coach Carrie Schmidt. I've been posting some TikToks, so I'm trying to get get with the times now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing reels on uh, Instagram, so. I'm still trying to figure them out. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, that's the thing is you have to stay up to date on all of these trends and it, it can yes. it can be exhausting, but it can also be fun. I actually enjoy making these videos. It is fun. Time. So yeah, hit me up on uh, at Coach Carrie Schmidt and let's connect on social media and change the world together. Because here's the deal. This is my vision. I want to reach, teach, and transform over 1 million lives globally by helping people raise their level of consciousness and mental health awareness. I can't do that alone. I need a tribe. I need a community. It takes a village. It takes a village. And I am... My vision is to create the infinite solutions community where you have a problem through the power of this community and the infinite, we have a solution. So I cannot do this alone. I need a village of people who are willing and ready to speak up, rise up and make a difference in this world. If you haven't started it yet, that sounds like a good Facebook group. Yes, I, 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 I've created it. I just, I don't think okay. I've published it yet. So I need to do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's actually, that's a great idea. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Um, so I'm, all right, is there, first of all, is there anything you, you would like to add before I ask you this last question? Um, no. No. You sure? Yeah. Positive. Uh, well, okay, you ready for this? Well, okay. Well, you guys can do anything <laughs> you put your mind to. You just have to believe believe and achieve you could do anything okay actually uh, before because your your mindset's a lot like mine is there a and this is, wasn't my last question but is there a certain book that you read to help you with that yes what, what was it the power of intention by dr wayne dyer oh best it, it was actually the first book i read that got me on my journey of personal development and i went to a okay. therapist when this was i don't know 13 years ago um and the best advice she gave was read this book and i read that book i started following dr wayne dyer absolutely love him love his message um he has another book that's really good is called your sacred self so okay. I recommend those two books to my clients all the time. And anybody who asks me, read books by Wayne Dyer. It will change your perspective of life. I'll definitely have to check that out now. Yeah, they, I didn't read them, so I'll have to check them out. Mm-hmm. So what's an insult that you received that you're proud of? Um, um, trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that you're trouble? <laughs> So uh, I'm I'm a woman working in an all male dominated industry, right? So manufacturing okay. industry, unionized facility, and there was a manager. His name is Chuck Filoni. I love you, Chuck. Um, <laughs> and he used to give me trouble all the time. But he would he would um, we'd walk by each other and he'd say, "Hey, trouble!" <laughs> like it was like he just called me trouble, right? 
Um, and I'm proud of that because why he called me trouble is because I challenged the status quo. If something didn't make sense, I spoke up and said, why are we doing it this way? Like, you know, and that would piss some people off from right in the management team because I'm challenging the decisions. But that's the only way you grow. It's the only way you get better is to challenge and, you know, try to look for better ways and ask why. Yeah. So he called me trouble. Um, I wasn't really insulted by it. I'm like, yep, trouble's my middle name. What's up? (laughs) Great. Now I can't get the Travis Tritch song out of my head. (laughs) Jeez. Carrie, I want to thank you so much. And, you know, anytime you want to come back on, you know, just contact me. The door is open, especially when the second book is done, too. Yeah. You know what? You just gave me And the podcast. I would Uh love to, um, how you said the podcast around mental health, I have connected Mm -hmm. with so many people through this platform and I have five just on the top of my mind that we could get together and do like a panel and talk about mental health and do like a virtual panel. That was my other plan. Yes. So count me in and and I have other people that I know that would be interested in that too. I want to thank Carrie for coming on this episode and I've said it millions of times and I'll keep saying it. If you're having any problems, talk to someone. There are people there to listen. And of course, make sure you pick up Carrie's book and leave a full review. We got to get her to a thousand. So leave a full review. As far as the podcast goes, I'm actually going to recommend one that I found that actually Carrie was on. It's called Intentional Optimist unconventional leaders check out the trailer you're listening to intentional optimists the podcast for unconventional leaders where you'll find inspiration learn to discover and develop your own strengths and hear from inspiring women just like you who are making a difference in their community who knows you just might find yourself stepping up as the next unconventional leader right where you are I'm your host, Andrea Johnson, the original Intentional Optimist. Hi there, I'm Andrea Johnson, and I am so excited to tell you about my brand new podcast. It's called Intentional Optimists. It's a podcast for unconventional leaders. Does that sound like you? When I was young, I wanted to be an entertainer. Specifically, I wanted to sing, and that's pretty good. I even went to college in Nashville and worked in the recording industry, but something always held me back and prevented me from realizing that dream. I'd love to blame it on my lifelong struggle with my weight or even believing the notion that women, respectable women, have certain roles to play. But instead, I did the safe thing. I got a job. But I always knew there had to be something more, so I set out on a personal growth journey to figure it out. I worked hard, discovering my strengths and abilities, and then I used them to grow a successful career in higher education, administration, and management. But let me tell you who I am today. I'm a wife of 25 years, thank you. I'm a mom, an adoptive mother of a nearly 12-year-old son. I'm a pastor's wife, a teacher, but most of all, I'm a life coach. Throughout my career, the very best parts of my job have always been helping others grow and develop. Unfortunately, I found too many women think their voice doesn't matter. They think they aren't allowed to lead or step up or offer an opinion or even just truly be themselves. I was one of those women. Do you find yourself thinking those things? If so, listen up, sister, because this podcast is for you. It's for me, for everyday, amazing women who know there's something more. Women who are interested in growing, contributing, and truly making a difference. Here, you'll be inspired to discover and capitalize on your strengths and develop your leadership skills. I'll set you on a path to search out areas where you can use those skills in your community to help you become a role model, encouraging, empowering, and mentoring other women to do the same. Now, leadership always begins with growth, and I have my own personal philosophy of what that looks like. It's called intentional optimism. I'll teach you all about it and provide actionable tips and advice on how to grow, step up, make a difference, and yes, as scary as it seems, lead. 
we'll explore inspiring stories and talk to women who are making a difference in their local community. They might be business owners or volunteers. They could be empowering other women by offering entrepreneurial and educational opportunities. But each one of them is leading in unconventional and creative ways. I'm a woman of faith and believe we are all created specifically, purposefully, and intricately in the image of our Creator. All are worthy. All are leaders. All have a voice. No woman's voice is small and no woman is insignificant. Every woman can make a difference and I want you to walk away each week encouraged and empowered to grow personally and lead in whichever circumstance you may find yourself. Because here's the thing, you are the answer. You are the future of leadership and the role models for future generations. I'm Andrea Johnson, life coach and intentional optimist. Join me right here each week and we'll explore all the exciting opportunities for you to grow and lead in your own unique, unconventional way. Hey, thanks for listening today. If you're an intentional optimist and you love this podcast, please subscribe and leave a review with a five-star rating. You can also snap a screenshot right where you're listening, share it to social media, and tag me. This helps others find us and we'll have an even bigger impact. If you're curious what it would be like to work more closely with me or just to step up as an unconventional leader yourself, I invite you to schedule a free discovery session to talk with me and learn more. Just email me at andrea at theintentionaloptimist.com. If you're looking for an encouraging and uplifting community on Facebook, hop on over and join the Intentional Optimist group, women encouraging women from all over the globe. The community and email links are right here in the show description wherever you listen to the podcast. Until next time, remember, you're the answer. You are the future of leadership and the role models for future generations. If you would like to be a guest on the podcast, or if you would like to recommend somebody for me to get on the podcast, or if there's a topic you want me to talk about, just go to conversationswithrichbennett.com, click the Be a Guest link, and fill out the form, and I'll get in contact with you, and we'll get everything set up. And while you're there, please subscribe to the podcast as well as the newsletter. And check out all my sponsors and, of course, my co-hosts. Please show your support for all of them as well. Until next time, my name is Rich Bennett. Stay safe and thank you for joining the conversation. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Harford, and Cecil counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Best Home Improvement Contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Hill Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Baltimore's Best Roofing Contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, Look no further than Tar Heel Construction Group. Visit their website at tarheelconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410-638-7021. Experience the excellence and community impact for yourself. Tar Heel Construction Group, building excellence one roof at a time.